Hi, welcome to NCT 15 and to an interview with um, Mary Kent Whitaker and Hannah Whitaker. And we're going to talk a bit about intellectual freedom and about the power of reading. Um, Mary Kent, can you talk to us a little bit about the challenge to the book uh, by Isabel Allende in your classroom a couple of years ago? And this was 2013-2014, uh, and I was prepared to teach Isabel Allende's The House of the Spirits to my sophomore honors students, and I had taught it the previous year uh, successfully, and a parent brought a challenge, an official challenge to the book. She did not want it taught to anybody uh, at our high school, and so then the challenge ensued, and it took five months, uh, went through two committees and it ended up with the Board of Education. The first two committees voted unanimously to keep the book in the curriculum, uh, the school committee and the district committee. And then it went to the Board of Education and the Board of Education voted three to two that we could keep the book in the curriculum. But in the meantime, the book had been taken out of the curriculum. So it was basically a de facto ban and my students that semester didn't get to read it. So I had three classes of honor sophomores and we were prepared to teach it. I was going to start it three days prior to when they pulled the book out of my curriculum. And so I had to come up with that with the unit to replace this incredible unit of Isabella Allende's. But we did get a good outcome in February, so second semester, and I was able to teach the book and started it in April of that semester. And when I issued the books to my students, they applauded. They were so excited. And they had been so involved in the fight and just in their fight for their right to read and for intellectual freedom. I really think the students, their involvement helped us have this positive outcome. Thank you. Hannah. Hannah, by the way, is a second generation English teacher. <laughs> And um, we were just talking about your teaching one of the most challenged books in the country, which is Sherman Alexie's book, Diary of a Part-Time Indian. Can you talk a little bit about that and how your students felt? Mm -hmm. um, well, I've had a very different experience because I think there have been a handful of parent concerns, but I haven't known which parents they haven't come to me personally um, and went to the administration at my school while my relationship with um, students were protected and of course it's an amazing book to teach in an amazing unit and they got so much out of it and really you know pretty unanimous, unanimously have um, enjoyed the book and so it's been really nice to feel the support from my administration and to have the intellectual freedom and you know the right to teach and the right to learn so protected and supported um, and it's a book that's taught in the whole across our network as part of our curriculum and that's been a pretty um, common experience across all of our six schools. Well that's exciting. As a wrap-up I wonder if each of you could maybe recall uh, a student reaction to the book <laughs> that you were teaching. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can think of a specific mm -hmm. one. I, I think um, our unit on Isabel Allende's The House of the Spirit lasts a month, and it's a, a long book, and it's an intense book. And initially, the, the students have a, most of the students have a real cognitive dissonance with one of the protagonists, Esteban Tereva. And as they continue through the book, they can, they watch themselves kind of changing even against their will and so I, I would say that their reaction to that particular character and other characters is they get so involved with the characters so emotionally involved they grow with the characters in that length of time and their critical thinking just it just grows by leaps and bounds and they feel so proud of themselves for having read this book and understood it they feel just they feel and they feel respected that they're able to read a book like this that has so many um, themes to talk about and it's a high level book so they feel very proud of themselves and very highly respected as scholars thank you um there are lots of moments from the book and teaching it that come to mind one of um the days that sort of last in memory is teaching students come in having read 
about the death of Junior's sister. Spoiler alert. Um, so feeling so deeply for him and just so present in the book. And we've talked about how it's a coming of age story, but then also through these different lenses of systemic racism and how Junior responds to grapples with different elements of dehumanization that results of stereotypes. And then they come in and just aching for him. He can't get ahead of anything. And it's just um, a really sweet moment to see the relationship to the protagonist and this kind of deepening understanding of the struggles that juniors have to overcome in his coming of age trajectory as well as the role of systemic oppression just in sort of an everyday daily life. And those are really beautiful and meaningful conversations. And then after we finish the book, students have coming of age and systemic racism in their everyday lexicon and use it appropriately <laughs> and to describe and analyze other books or independent books. I think it pops up in other classes sometimes I've heard, which is pretty fun <laughs> to hear. So. Wonderful. Well, there you've given us some great reasons for teaching literature. Thank you. <laughs>